Hey folks, so glad to see you out there. I have an incredibly fun and beginner friendly quilting project today. We're gonna make one block over and over again in a scramble fashion, and then we're gonna put it together to make a beautiful quilt we call gumballs, available in several flavors. Are you ready? Let's get stitching. Well, well, welcome back everybody. So great to see you all on the other side of the camera. I am Rob Appel, your host here at So Well with Rob Appel, Stitch in Heaven's YouTube channel. And I'm super excited to welcome you all to another super fun and incredibly beginner friendly quilt kit tutorial, or you could obviously uh, just pick up the pattern and work for you from your scraps. Sorry, I am so excited about the ease of this block, I can hardly catch my breath. So let me take a moment and slow down. And like I said again, welcome. We're working on the Gumballs quilt. This is an original from Stitch in Heaven and we have it in a huge variety of flavors. Stick with me today and one of you will win this almost completed quilt kit. Ah, we're gonna do two blocks for you on video, send you the rest of it, tell you how to win that at the end of today's video. Make sure you're subscribed and following along, commenting as always, because we really love to uh, have you engaged with our quilting community out there. Now this is the base unit for the gumballs block itself. It is very easy and like I said earlier, it's basically a scramble, but we are gonna make the blocks all of the same. So we're gonna pay a little bit of attention to the orientation that is found here in your pattern. As I bring this forward, I just wanna show you really quick, like I mentioned, it comes in a great variety of flavors. We're doing the blueberry, the blue one today, cause I love the color blue. Green's my favorite, but this is the one I grabbed. So yeah, we have a green, a purple, an orange, a pink, even a patriotic version, which I think is stunning. Um, I love these scrap looking quilts. There's so many things you can do with them. They're a great place to practice your free motion machine quilting if you're just getting into that as well. Uh, this quilt's gonna finish at 60 inches by 72 inches. Uh, if you love the way these laser cut quilt kits work from Stitch in Heaven, you could always buy two and make a much larger uh, quilt top. If you are working from your scraps, you just keep building and building as you go. I'm going to encourage you to stay though in a single color family, at least for your first gumballs quilt, uh, so that you can follow the basic instructions we have. Now, I'm gonna dive right into the pattern. You can see here we have some very basic assembly instructions and at the end of the project, this is like I said, exactly what we're doing. We have the same block here and we're just going to rotate the orientation as we build around in our wonderful uh, quilt here. So this is gonna be great, super easy. I believe we have 30 blocks to make, but like I said, because I wanna give this quilt kit to one of our lucky viewers out there, I'm gonna make a second block with you all today. There's the first and I'll send the rest of the block out free of charge to our lucky winner. Um, so we're just gonna dive right in. Now today we're looking at the laser cut batik uh, pre-cut kit from Stitch in Heaven. And so you can probably notice all of these corners and everything are trimmed perfect. Folks, what you don't see on the set today is a rotary cutter or a cutting mat. Uh, well, the cutting mat or the rotary cutter or the rulers or anything. Um, because basically I'm just gonna sew these straight out of the box. It's incredibly accurate. And this is why I say it's a great place for our beginner quilters to work. It's a scramble. So I like to have my fabrics in kind of different color orientations, So I have a remembrance of what's going on with the different batiks available. But you'll also notice here, I do have my sizes in a bit of an organized fashion. I've got a small and a large square. I've got a skinny and a wide rectangle, a bigger rectangle, an even bigger rectangle, and a pile of half square triangles to be. So let's start there. Each block is going to require four half square triangles. Um, and like usual, we're going to want to match these up lights to dark. So what I've just kind of done is I pulled out a variety of the batiks that come in the kit from Stitch in Heaven here. And so let's do a quick quick scramble. I want you to be able to see these in your project. So let's not use fabrics that have the very, very similar uh, tones like this, right? So I'm gonna ask you to try to mix and match a little bit. And let's do something like this. And of course, I must have missed one of the colors out there. So now I'm just gonna grab this one. Oh yeah, that's a neat one as well. But we can switch this around, boom. Boom. You see those are fairly close in tone. Um, 
but you can still see the difference. You're looking to be able to make sure you can see your seam allowance. Once you have those, and these are batiks, folks, so I'm just gonna tell you there really isn't a right side, but some of them are gonna be more crisp than others. So let that be the right side if you want, but just fold these over now. Lay them over here, and folks, take the moment. I mean, we've cut these perfectly for you so that you have no trimming, no, not even dog ears, but just line up the edges perfect. And we're gonna now sew across the long edge, and these are also very chain piece friendly. I've set a quarter inch seam guide on my machine so that whoever receives this project from us at home, uh, hopefully will have a very accurate block. So far, so good. And I'm just gonna zip through all four of these half square triangles real quick in what we call chain piecing format, right? So just laying them again, matching up those edges perfectly, right over to the sewing machine. Noticing I'm not pulling, this is again for the beginners out there, not pulling, not pushing, just letting the fabric sew right through. Beautiful. What I would like all of you to do, however, is I want you to take your entire kit, no matter what color you get. Oh, and that's the first question of the day. Let me know in the comments below, of all of the colors, which is your personal favorite color. You'll get to comment multiple times in today's video. I encourage you to do that. That's one of the ways you're gonna win, possibly this kit. First question, what is your favorite color of the Gumballs Quilt Kits? You can see them online, stitchinheaven.com. Green, pink, purple, blue, orange, patriotic. Let me know. And like I said, we've got our four half square triangles stitched together here, bringing you up to speed with your instructions here. We just made those. And what I was starting to say is mix and match all of your fabric so that you don't get painted into a corner where all your values are the same. Take the time to take your entire stack of fabrics and mix them and match as you go for your half square triangles. And I'm also gonna recommend you do the same with your small squares here. We're gonna build a four patch, folks. So we want, again, four different colors, or oh, excuse me, they're all blues, four different fabrics, and be careful, folks. They're a little sometimes crisp and stuck together. Okay, that's a nice combination, I think. Okay, so now we've got our four like this. Again, I would prefer to have the ones that are most similar in a diagonal format. So now we're just gonna go ahead and grab those two. Notice I'm still chain piecing, just to show you how quick and easy this can be. Uh, I again would have chain pieced all of the half square triangles. I would have chain pieced all of my two parts of the four patches like we're doing right now. Okay. And so we don't get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's finish out these units. I'm gonna hit the thread cutter on my HQ 510. Love this machine. I've got my manual thread cutter up here, which is different than what the button I just pushed that cut my top and bobbin threads. Talk too long, the iron got cold. Surprise, surprise. I know everybody, I'm a chit chatter, aren't I? but we have fun together and I do really appreciate all of your support out there. I hear so many of you say you love the uh, long-winded instructions provided here by yours truly. So, and I had the iron on earlier, so it's pretty warm. And I'm just gonna take a moment now and I'm pressing all of my seams over to my darker of the two fabrics. Again, if you're a brand new quilt maker, what that's gonna do is it's just gonna help lay out fabrics later. It's gonna help our seams nest together. So I just wanna hold my darker of the two fabrics in the air and I'm gonna press into that seam, giving a really nice crisp finish to that there. Okay, let's set our four patches right sides up. We're gonna set those aside and come back to them. Now with, oh, I'm sorry, I said four patches. Those are our half square triangles, of course. For the four patch parts, Right now, again, pressing into the dark. This is gonna make great sense in a second. Okay, and again, making sure that we get our liker colors. Do you see that, liker colors? Um, like Likeish colors uh, in diagonal directions here. Now, when I flip this over, I'm just gonna match up, nestle those little seams there. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish the four patch now.
And we really do have, folks, the majority of the units made for an individual gumball, gumballs block, okay? So now let's go ahead, and I think the easiest way to really show you all of this is looking in your bottom corner diagram. Again, there's our square, okay? So we've built the four half square triangle. So now let's just go into a fun assembly. But again, I like to put my whole block together on my table in front of the machine so that I can position those four different half square triangles so that they give the most patchwork impact, okay? So now what we're gonna do is going across the top, and this is where I said orientation is important. So I'm gonna take one of mine following this diagram right here. I've got my diagonal coming down, my darker of the two fabrics. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of these here that was my two and a half by four and a half. And you see how those are the same fabrics, folks? Let's not do that. Let's not use that one. Let's use one that's different than the other two in the half square triangle, okay? And then we need our um, four and a half by six and a half inch, right? Which is going to be this one, if I remember correctly, yes. But now again, I've got the same fabric, so let's not do that to ourselves. And we're gonna go ahead and just grab one of these. Do you see what I mean by working the whole block together? Because we have a lot of these pre-cut rectangles that are only used once in each block, okay? Coming down to our next row, we're gonna use two half square triangles that come together to kind of form a tent shape. So we're gonna do this here and I'm rotating just to make sure that I'm getting a nice variety, not putting too many colors next to each other, right? Okay, and then now I'm gonna have the skinniest of my rectangles here, okay? And then coming into the bottom, we have our four patch. It shows the darkest in the corner, so let's do that, okay? Now I also have a rectangle here going in, another one of my skinnies. Just like that, following here, okay? And then at the end, we're gonna build this section here that fills in, I think I'm missing a piece. <laughs> yes, I forgot my last half square triangle, okay? And oh, you see folks how that really changes that, okay? So I don't like this one now there, not enough contrast. So I'm gonna take it back up there and let's just find something else. I'll go ahead and use that lighter one again, okay? So then when we're done, we're gonna build this unit, this unit, and we have one more section which fits in here, which is going to be made from our squares. And we don't have much of this hexagon print, so I'm gonna bring in a square for up in what will become the uh, bottom corner down here. Oh, but that matches, that matches. You can see it's a fun scramble. Oh yeah, let's go with the dark one. So we'll bring our dark one down here like this. And this is why I love quilt making so much, folks. It's just so much fun to come through here and to play. Hopefully you can see the whole block, maybe in our overhead camera, I'll just shift this a little bit better, okay? But we have some methods for construction so that we don't get ourselves stolen into a tough spot. So let's go ahead and do that next. So what I was saying, we're gonna start from our bottom two rows and build that unit and that unit. This top row is its complete unit here. If you're following your instructions, we're gonna sew those together first. So let's go ahead and do that. Taking my rectangle and laying it right over onto my half square triangles. And notice again, folks, with no trimming or anything, everything matches up. So if it's not matching up, you probably have not set your quarter inch seam allowance correctly. So you wanna check that or you may have accidentally grabbed the wrong size rectangle, okay? For something like this, I like to press between every time I stitch. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab that other rectangle, line up those seams, and over to the machine we go. Top row is complete of that block. 
I'm gonna go ahead and press into the darker fabrics here. The nesting isn't going to happen for us. This is just color management, folks, and that just comes from years of making quilts. Now again, we need to build these sections before we can add in this section. So just checking this out. And because I am a bit of a efficient quilt maker, you'll notice I'm gonna grab this here real quick while I'm at the machine. This saves a little bit of thread and a little bit of time. It's kind of like chain piecing, but you can also stitch yourself into a situation. So you wanna make sure that when you come back from your iron, you are remembering. And I don't know if you noticed that, but I just made sure that my top one was on the top and my next row was down here closer to my body. That's how my personal organization works that way. Now on this bottom triangle here in this block, I want to make sure that your diagonal is running correctly. Um, when I put mine together the first time, my diagonal was not running correctly and it does kind of tie into these uppers. So make sure your diagonal is running kind of from your upper right hand corner down to your lower left hand corner in this bottom row. See that? And it's real clear in the pattern as well. And the only reason I knew that was a challenge is because I accidentally made that mistake when I was prepping for today's video. So Jack the Ripper took care of that for me. <laughs> and you, whoever's gonna win this quilt kit. Would you like to know how to win this quilt kit? I bet you would. So as we're getting ready to wrap this up, I'm gonna tell you right now, the question before, sewing on this skinny strip while we're chatting, the question before was, what is your favorite color of Gumball's quilt kits? In order to win today's project, we'll give this away at the end of the month, the date is in the description below, as well as links to all of the products. All you simply need to do is comment blueberry for the win. It's my color of choice. So I'm excited, blueberry for the win. Enter that, make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. You might also want to sign up for the email over at stitchinheaven.com. But all you need to do to win today's quilt kit, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you're commenting in the video, blueberry for the win, but I also want to know what is your personal favorite color Maybe blueberry is ours. Okay, uh, real quick folks, we've got these two rows set together. While I'm here, I'm gonna put my small, my big square and my smaller rectangle together. We should give these things names like, you know, Carl and Dave and Kevin and stuff, if you ask me. Okay, so in order to do that, I now need to combine these two. Just make sure that you've got everything in the same orientation and you'll notice how nice and clean all of these line up because you're using one of the laser cut quilt kits from Stitch in Heaven. No trimming, no cutting. This is a great project to take on a retreat, folks, if you're doing another workshop that might require some focus. You know how I love to have something that kind of breaks the focus, gives me a refresh in my brain, allows me to enjoy some creativity in my brain as I'm working. And so projects like this are wonderful to have with you because you can just play and play and play. You probably pre-prepped all those half square triangles like I mentioned. Folks, as we're putting this on, please make sure your bottom square is there for you. And uh, as I was starting to say, you know, you get those half square triangles and your four patches are all built. You keep them in a fun little project bag or tote. And um, then whenever you need, you could make yourself one of your gumball squares like we've done here today. And then once you have all 30 of the squares built, or if you want to, like I said, make more, very simple, you're gonna go ahead and just play with your building and rotations next. So as soon as I finish this seam, we're gonna pull the other one off the wall and talk about how this works. Okay, and again, just pressing this final seam, and hey, why pull one off the wall when we can just put this one up against it? So I wanna make sure, let's go ahead and pull out 
our back page here. And I'm double checking that I do have a half square triangle here in the orientation. So then basically let's start with this built as it is, okay? I'm gonna slide it over just like that. And then each rotation is a quarter turn rotation and clockwise each time. So I'm just gonna rotate this clockwise now. Set that up here. And let's talk about something else real quick. Folks, you'll notice that those two squares are gonna now go ahead and touch. So in the long run, of course, I want you to build all of your gum balls before you load your gum ball jar because I don't want too many of the colors to touch if possible. If you need to make extra orientations, I don't think it's really gonna be seen in the quilt project itself, but do your best not to allow too many of the exact same fabrics to touch throughout your fun, scrappy looking project so that you can really enjoy and see all of the different seams as they come together. When it comes to free motion machine quilting, of course, some very easy stippling over something like this. You could practice block per block some of the designs you've been watching. Maybe you want to use some swirly motions. Maybe you want to do big circles to represent the gumballs. Uh, very simple. It doesn't need a lot of quilting. It's probably not going to show up very much unless you use an opposing color anyways because there's so much patchwork going on. So to the new quilters out there, again, I'm encouraging you to machine quilt this quilt yourself. It's a great place to practice. I offer lots of machine quilting videos also here at So Well. So if that helps you in any ways, please check out our playlist for other videos that might be awesome in your quilting journey. And we're so excited to be here for you. Again, folks, we love these gumball quilt kits. They're super, super simple. We have several other styles of quilt kits that are just like this. Check out the website for more information. I've got a link below. I've got something twitching in my eye. So I'm gonna sign off now, folks. But as always, so great to have you here. Until I see you with another tutorial. Folks, please stay well. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It really helps support our channel. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Hit the little button to be notified every time we go live or do a new video for all of you. And here's one from the past I think you'll really enjoy.